Over the last few weeks, we have been talking about different aspects of prayer, uh, things that we can do uh, when we pray, you know, how to pray for specific individuals so that they will come to know the Lord. Um, last week, we talked about adoration. You know, we were, we've been looking at the uh, the Lord's Prayer, you know, our Father who who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we talked about adoration, ways we can adore God, the words we can use, the uh, attributes, the characteristics of God. And today we're going to continue on and we're going to be looking at getting direction. You know, it says in, in the Lord's Prayer, um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the only way that can be done is if we seek his direction on how to bring his kingdom and have his will done on this earth as it is in heaven. And so you think about seeking direction or finding directions. Uh, I think back to my younger years when we'd go on, on trips and, um, and I, I really enjoyed getting the atlas out and looking at the maps of, of the states and figuring out the routes or the routes that we were gonna take and kind of being the navigator and, uh, and, and learning how to read a map to know where you would turn left or right uh, or keep going straight and, and the directions north, south, east, or west. And, and it's funny to think that um, there are some people, a lot of people probably, you know, you tell people how to come to our, let's say, come to our church. And you say, okay, you head south on one and you get to 218, you turn east and head toward Burn, and then you go a few miles, then you'll turn, turn right, you'll head south on, on 700 East. And for some people, I've heard this said before, that people giving directions like that, they say, okay, Lewis and Clark, I don't know directions. Give me uh, landmarks that I know where to turn. And so, like for that instance, head down, down State Road 1, and when you get to Riceburg, there's Riceburg, old Riceburg Church there. Turn left and, and, and make those distinctions. Um, and there's many people, too, when reading a map, they have to make sure the map is facing the direction that the car is going. Uh, it's hard to, for them to transpose from if you're, you're heading north but, or you're heading south, but your, your map shows you're heading north and you get all confused. But anyway... Uh, you're looking for direction, trying to find the route that you want to take. Well, today, there is very little use of the atlas, the big the atlases that we used to have, the maps that we used, because everything has gone to GPS. You know, you type in where you want to go, and the GPS will guide you to your destination. And in recent years, you know, that's I kind of know where I'm going when I go places, but it's also nice having that GPS. Several years ago, we went down to San Antonio, Texas, flew into town and, and went to the rental uh, car rental place. And I got lost. I, I almost got lost leaving the rental place at the airport. I mean, it was just so confusing, but I had my, my phone with the GPS on it and it, it helped me get to my destination. Um, or just uh, in the last couple of years, uh, going to visit uh, one of my kids out on the East Coast and, and got to West Virginia and went out to dinner, got dark. I was so thankful for my GPS because it gave me the directions I needed to go and it would tell me where to turn and, and, and how far I had to go in the hills and the and the curves of that, that area, I would have been lost without that GPS, without those directions. And, <clears throat> you know, and so many people, for many people, they really have no idea how to give directions. Uh, there, several years ago, we were down at, in Avon for a competition. And we were driving into Avon, and we weren't quite sure where the school was. So we stopped at a gas station. In Avon, that was just like just a few miles away from the school. And we asked the guy uh, um, at the counter, you know, where is the school? How do we get there from here? He had no idea. Uh, he was so unaware of, of directions. 
And, and we know that many times men are often criticized for not giving or asking for directions when they're needed. But we need to be seeking directions in our lives. You know, in the church, we're supposed, supposed to be seeking direction from God to know what we're supposed to do uh, as individuals, but corporately as a church. What are we supposed to do? Uh, what's the direction he wants us to go on? At any, on any given day, week, month, what is it he wants us to do? Well, within the church, and just like in, in the business world, there is a lot of focus on having a vision statement and having a mission statement. Having a vision of where you're going and a mission of how you're going to get there. And it's imperative that we, that we have a vis- vision that we are pursuing uh, Proverbs 29, verse 18, God tells us, he says, there is no, where there is no revelation, where there is no vision, the pe- people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. And other versions, where there is no, where there is no vision, where there is no p- vision, the people perish. And so it is so important to know where are we going? What's the big picture? Where are we headed as individuals? But where are we headed as an organization, as a, an organism, as a church, the, the church body? So we put together vision statements and mission statements so as to remain focused on the job at hand. And so, you know, an example would be, you know, our vision is to reach all the people of Wells and Adams counties. That's our vision. We're going to do that. Or maybe our vision is to double the size of our church in 2022. That's, that's our vision of where we're heading to. But then how do we get there? You know, what's the direction that we need to go to get to that place? But I often think, you know, years ago I was asked, it was one of my... Um, at one point when I realized it was time for me to move on from another church, I had an individual ask, you know, what's your vision for the church? And I shared what, what was on my heart, and, and their response was, oh, we already know about that. Let's do something else. And, and I realized, not then, but many years later, that, you know, the vision isn't, mine. It is the Lord's. The vision really isn't the church's. It is the Lord's vision. And maybe I'm wrong with this, but it just had that that thought that, you know, I think God has already given us a vision that we are supposed to pursue. You know, the great, uh, great commandment to love the Lord our God with our, all our heart, our mind, and soul, and strength. That's something that we're supposed to do. That's our vision, to love the Lord our God with our entire being. How do we do that? The second commandment of to love your neighbors as yourself. How do we do that? Then you have the great commission of go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. Or what we've been talking about over the last several years of uh, the images of what we are to be as the church. We're the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. We're the house of God and the family of God. So in my mind, I can say that is the vision for the church. To love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love our neighbor as ourselves. To go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. And becoming the body and bride of Christ and the house and family of God. That is the vision for what God has for his church, for his people. But how do we get there? How do we get to that place? It's that mission that we need direction. How will we accomplish the vision that is set before us? And I think a few steps we can take to seek the direction needed to fulfill God's vision for his children is, number one, simply be open to the Lord's leading. Be open to his leading. 
What is the direction he's giving us? You know, as we seek the Lord, we need to be open to that leading. He will point us in the direction of where we are to go and what we are to do. And we have assurances of that in the scripture. Proverbs 16, verse 9. In their hearts, human plan their course. Humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. So we can have plans for what we're going to do, the mission of fulfilling the vision that God has given us. And we can put into place the things that we are going to do, the things that are going to happen, and we can make those plans. We can set that course. But it is God who is establishing our steps and making it happen. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, he says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And so as we listen for the Lord's direction, the Lord's leading, his voice, his still small voice will be behind us pointing us in the way we are to go. If we will listen for it and pay attention to it. Because seeking the leading of the Lord is a job that each one of us can take part in. It's not just the pastor. It's not the leadership team. It's not the church board or the elder board. It's all of us. We can all receive that guidance, those directions, the purpose of what we are to do. He doesn't just speak to one or two people, but can speak and give insight to anyone that he chooses. Even the lowest of the low, he can give direction to. Which leads to number two. You know, if we are, <clears throat> if we're open to God's leading, number two, that we consider the insights of others. What do other people have to say? You know, when we share our insights and leadings that we have received, we as the body of Christ can work together and respond to the voice of God. You know, he has given us a direction. I mean, he's given us a vision. He's given us a purpose on this planet. But how do we accomplish that? And that's where we as the body, the church of God, when he speaks and we listen for it and we, 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 we're open to the leading of God and he speaks, that we can share those thoughts, those insights, those, those directions with one another. And God can use us corporately to fulfill his vision. Proverbs fifteen twenty two, and this is why it's so important. That it's not just one or two people that are pursuing the Lord or pursuing the leading or the direction of the Lord. It says in Proverbs 15, 22, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And so maybe I come up with an idea. Hey, I'd like to do this. And as a body, we work together or we talk that through. Well, well, maybe that won't be good. You know, if, what, about a year ago or six months ago, I thought I'd do, hey, let's have lunch after church every week. If you can stay, great. If you can't, that's fine. And I got a lot of, really? Are you sure that's something? And it turned out to be a wonderful thing that I stopped over the winter months. I don't know if I'll bring that back or not, but that's one of those things. I would like to do this simply so that we can draw, our, draw closer to each other, get to know each other. And that's part of fulfilling the vision of being the body, being that house that God wants us to be. But maybe someone else within our body, within our group will say, hey, what about doing this or that or the other thing? and that's just the leading that they had received from God, then we can put those things into practice as well. You know, we all have an important part to play in this thing called the church. And God will give us directions 
It's not, his leadings are not limited to those in leadership, but are available to all who will take notice of his promptings. And then as we consider those insights, you know, we're open to the leading, we consider the insights. Number three, we just simply trust in the Lord's presence. That we do the things that we believe that God is leading us to. And we, we work together to make those things happen and we just trust that God is in it. You know, like I said, his purpose, his vision, love the Lord your God, love your neighbor, go make disciples. Become the house and family and body and bride. Become those things. That is the vision I have for you. But then just trust that he is present. He is present whenever we are doing things for him. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will make straight your paths. You know, and maybe an idea that we have doesn't seem, it doesn't make much sense. Let's say lunch after church every week. It doesn't make sense to do that. You'll wear people out. But then to say, but don't lean on your own understanding. Trust in him. There's a purpose behind what he's leading us to do. And in Psalm 37, verses 23 and 24, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. So again, that picture of, you know, just trusting that the Lord is going to do something in us and through us as we listen to him. We're open to that leading. We consider what others are thinking. And then just simply trusting him as we move forward in the work that he's given to us. And then finally, number four, we need to live out our faith to please the Lord. Colossians 1, verses 9 to 14. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of His holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so Paul writes to the church in in Colossae just saying, you know, you need to live out your faith to please the Lord and he will reveal his will to us as we live our faith, out our faith to please him. You know, that's part of our purpose. Fulfilling the vision is living our life to please the Lord, doing the things that he wants us to do and asks us to do and commands us to do. And we are pursuing those things and he will bless us in those efforts. And so I think, you know, this week, looking at the uh, seeking for direction. You know, if God's vision for his church is to love love the Lord with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and, and teaching them, and becoming the body of Christ and the bride of Christ, the house of God and the family of God, then what can we do? What can we do to fulfill that vision? What is God placing upon your heart and your mind of saying, I think we, we should do this or look into this as a body. Maybe we should look into this, uh, doing this act or, or participating in this program or offering this whatever it is. What is God saying to you and your heart, your mind, your soul of what we can do to fulfill his vision? What is that mission he is giving to us to make his vision a reality. 
What is that mission he has given to us individually, but also corporately? So I, I just pray that, that we will all seek the Lord, be open to those leadings, and, and to listen to one another as to what the ideas um, of what can be done to fulfill the vision of God, that we can trust in him and then live out our faith in pleasing him all of our days. Let's seek the Lord this week. God bless you. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.